in order to let Ron absorb the question, I'll step back one step. We had the privilege of working together last summer when Ron brought to the Israel Museum an amazing project called 720 Degrees, something that started in London and then morphed and took on a completely different character when it reached the Israel Museum in Jerusalem. And what I had said, Ron, is that in In Reverse, which opened in Cholon two days ago, Indeed. part of what you present are squashed Italian cars prepared for display in Israel. And I'm wondering if that's what connecting cultures means. Um, where do I start? Wherever you want. Where do I start? Um, yeah, the exhibition that started two days ago was uh, my solution to avoid doing a retrospective. Because uh, I'm more interested in doing things that I haven't seen before. Uh, things that I, when I begin, I don't know how they're going to end. Uh, it's very scary for administrators, very scary for curators and, and museum people. But it turned out good. Um, it is uh, the, sub, the main subject matter is, as James said, Italian cars that have, have developed um, connection with here, like with everything else, because everyone is not only trapped in the place he was born, in the language that's around him, but also in the time. Um, when I hear um, strawberry fields forever, it makes me think of Tel Aviv, not of Liverpool. Because that's, that's where I heard it first, and that's what, what I grew up with. I was telling Rita that I have a piece of work, it's called Lovely Rita, because we all knew Lovely Rita Mita made, and we knew every word by heart, but we didn't understand the thing. I didn't know what the meter maid was. I know now it's a traffic warden. But I thought it's something to do with something that's a meter long. So I had a piece that was exactly a meter long. And by the time I named the piece, I knew, I knew that I didn't know originally. So, uh, but Rita thought it's because of her. But you're right now. I was sure that it was because of her. I'm um, very disappointed for that, but never This mind. question of... Uh, the influence of where you're from on your work um, is, is there. The question is asked and assessed. I, because I started working in England, I read a lot of Italian ar uh, articles this, talking about um, Anglo-Saxon culture and, uh, and the punk movement that had very little to do with them. I come from a very arty, privileged, spoiled environment in Tel Aviv. Um, but anyway, everyone's interpretation is welcome, even if it's wrong. I my respond to the influence of where you're from, uh, the, how it influences your work is, in my case, was uh, the biggest factor is that I'm not from here, not where I'm from, but the fact that I was I had the freedom of an outsider in England. I didn't, I didn't have aunts and uncles to please, and I didn't have, I mean, it was, and more, more than that, I mean, as soon as I finished my studies uh, and I started my studio, I had a deportation order, which gave me a lot of freedom because I, I started to work from a point of nothing to lose. Uh, I won in the end, and now I'm, uh, I'm not, I'm not in danger of being deported from anywhere. Um, but there is, I think, the place where you come from, the time you, you grew up with, and the fact that you are somewhere else. And I can, I can think of lots of uh, ways that that had a big influence on, on my work. Uh, the Italian, the Italian, to go back to the Italian's job, um, I had the idea of turning uh, Cinquecenti from 3D, from sculptures to paintings. Um, 
and I have a studio where I work in Italy, but it's illegal to get a car off the road in Italy. Um, and we ended up buying the cars in England, take them to Holland to flatten them, take them to Italy to embalm them and to do the makeup, ship them to Holon, and this exhibition was conceived for Holon, so it, it has sort of a lot of world traveling and, and different... Uh, Very Jewish. <laughs> nomadic. But anyway, the most important thing is it's in Holon now, where it was designed for. And um, do I speak more? Do I pass the microphone to you? <laughs> you can continue. Sorry? You can continue. Um, Maybe the visuals. Right. Um, and you know, if childhood and, and my artistic... If someone questions me about the highlight of my education, it, it is in a... What was it called? Machane Noar Shocher Omanut, Yerushalayim. And it was a very, very nice summer camp in Beit Vagan with uh, young um, teachers like Rafi Lavi. And, uh, and actually, I don't know if you know, I think that's where Arte po uh, Daluta Homer started in Israel because there was an American guy called Mitch Baker. Do you know him? Mitch Baker. Mitch Baker. He was the first one to come to Israel from New York, like bringing James Stein, Jim Dine and, and Larry Rivers with him. And he was the first one to start drawing with pencil on canvases. And people like the other tutors that looked at him, like Rafi and Ran Shkori and all this. And I thought I could see history being made uh, in Jerusalem. Someone should do a research on it. I think it's edited out. Of the, of the narrative, of the Israeli narrative. Um, do I continue? I don't, you, you tell me, I mean. Well, first, what you've just talked about, this, this idea about landing from another planet or being from the planet and whether or not that matters. We're going to save that for a question for later. I just, if you won't mind, I would love for you to talk about 720 degrees on the landscape of the museum, and I th you have some sure. images of it. Okay, it's a, it's a show that started uh, very locally. My studio is across the road from the Roundhouse. The Roundhouse started a tradition of doing an art to give the place, to devote it to an art installation once a year. Uh, first one was David Burns with his project playing the building, and I was asked to do the second one. And it was very, very, very site-specific. It was designed for a round building, and it was a container. It was a project within a project, a round theater within a round theater. The idea was to do a big, big curtain, eight meters tall, 20 meters diameter, have a seamless projection, and allow people to, to walk through the images, through the moving images. And it's the same image on the outside. And when you cross the image, it's the same image, but a mirror image inside. A uh, very sort of seductive thing. I did experiment in my studio, and, and I decided to open it to other colleagues, other artists, friends, and invited them to do a piece each. And uh, we did a loop. Then the, the Jerusalem season of culture uh, convinced me. I thought the natural place of it would be Tel Aviv, but they were so charming, and uh, they joined forces with James, and uh, we, it ended up in an amazing place. And although it was born as an indoors piece, it was gloriously amazing outside, and it didn't even need a projection where it was. Uh, the roundhouse that I mean, they, they own the work joint, jointly with me. I had to listen to a lot, to many, many speeches by James, telling him how much better it is in Jerusalem than in London. And that they're used to it now. And uh, what, you can say something? Not how much better, how it was exponentially more powerful when you dropped it into a new landscape. Yeah, that's the exact quote, but... Uh, <laughs> but uh, 
You have images. Do you want to show them? I mean, yeah, you have images. Yeah, that's it. No, it's not. This is a, this is a, a two weeks condensed into 58 seconds. What you don't see here is that I designed. You. Sorry? We don't see you. No, you don't. I, I, I prepared a different film for this gathering, but it was one and a half minutes too long, so <laughs> this was selected. Anyway, what you don't see here is that I, uh, I did the screensaver for the curtain, and it was the wailing. Do you have pictures of it? No. It was the wailing wall. The wailing wall. A Kotel Amaravi. What we call the Western Wall. Sorry, the West. The, is the Welling Wall the wrong term to you? It's okay. A Kotel Amaravi. <coughs> and not only you could put a, a little note inside, you can walk through the. And uh, I was prepared for a fight because there was the exhibition of on the Hasidim. And I was I was prepared for people objecting to it, trying to spray it with, with I don't know what, because there was the, the round wailing wall, people could, and it sometimes turned, and I did the graphics announcing what the pieces are on it. Not as, disappointingly, not a single complaint. <laughs> and I have lovely, delightful pictures of Hasidic visitors uh, standing by the round wall. Anyway. It became pure celebration, and we are eternally grateful to Ron.